In this video, we're going to be going over data sources in Terraform. So what are data sources? Basically, data sources allow you to retrieve data from different resources, essentially. So basically, all we've been doing so far is, is sending data to, to our like cloud provider like AWS and Azure or things like that. But maybe we just want to retrieve the data. So with the data sources, it's kind of like an API. So you're kind of like fetching, fetching the data and returning it and then using that in your configuration. So the easiest way to show that is to just, just go, go right in. So previously we've been using, let's, let's take this as an example. We have our VPC, a subnet and an instance. Well, We've been using the VPC as an, like, we've been creating a VPC every time. But maybe we already have our VPC created and we don't want to actually, like, create a new VPC, but we need that VPC data to be able to pass into our subnet to get that. So what we can use is, is a data source and, and go and grab that data. So let's do that now. So you have the data keyword here that we always start with. So you have the data. And then you're going to have your resource. So basically every resource that we've been using, like the resource name, like AWS VPC, AWS subnet, those all have a data source as well. So just as it has a resource, it has just the data as well to just export that data. So what we want to do is we want to get the ID of the, the VPC here. So what we can do AWS VPC, because that's the resource we want to grab. And then we just need a name that we want to do, which should just be foobar. It doesn't have to reference this. Like, so let, let, let's just get rid of this. You know, it could just be foobar. It could be, you know, let's just do tuts, tuto like tutorial. So we have that. So we have the, the, the resource name, but we have a prefix with data here. And then just the name here, which is, is internal to Terraform. And then we have our block statement again inside of curly braces. So there's a few different ways to to grab what what like VPC you want or what whatever resource you want, and each resource is slightly different in each way. But what one thing ha, uh, a lot of resources have is you can filter it out by like say tags. So let's say we want to grab I've got a, a VPC created in my account here that we can go look for. So I have VPC of name of Tuts here. So Let's let's try to grab this this VPC based on the name of Tuts. So what we can do here is well let's let's show you what the data sources have. So let's do Terraform VPC data. And let's it gives you different options that that you can use. So let's let's come here. So here you can actually specify the ID. If you know the ID, so this VPC ID, if you know that ID, you can pass that directly to the data source here if you want. So, so that's one way of retrieving the data. You know, but maybe you don't know, maybe you don't know the ID, maybe you just know the name. Um, so let's, th there's different obj options here. So you can do it on the CIDR block. Default would be like the default um, VPC. So if you set default equal to true, so if we set default equal to true here, this would be the default VPC in AWS, which would be, I believe in mine is going to be this one for now. So it would grab this one. And let's actually, let, let me just run this just to, just to show you. Um, I'm going to comment out this, these resources down here. But just to show you, I want to I want to log output this data here. Oh, and the, and the way to use this the output from a data source is it is similar to how you do the output of a resource. So you see how we have, you know, when we had the resource, we did AWS VPC main ID. Well, we do something similar with data data sources. We just do data dot the, the resource data dot AWS VPC dot tuts and then that will give us all of the the data outside of the, the VPC if we wanted the ID 
we could do tuts.id. Let's let's run this just to show you. It does work. Uh, Terraform apply auto approve. Perfect. So it did work. So now what we had see the tags of will dash VPC. So we got will VPC will dash VPC because. This is the default VPC on my account right now. So that's why it approved that's why it returned that and not that one. So that's one way of grabbing the data. So let's let's grab so what we want to do is I want to create an instance. I want to use this this Tuts VPC and use that VPC as our our subnet which then uses our instance. So what we can do is let me leave that that output there. So let's let's get this by the tag. So we can do filter, which is here. And what we can do with the filter is grab it by 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 a name. So we can do like name, and then since it's a tag, we can do tag colon. And then the, the the tag itself. So in our case, the tag for this is going to be name. So we can do name, and then we have val a values key, which is an array, which could be multiple values. But we want what we want is we want tuts. So that, so that's one way of doing it. So let's log this and make sure we get. So right now you can see we have will VPC. Now when we run this, we should see it should be the Tuts VPC if we did this correctly. And each each resource is a little bit different, so you can kind of look and see what they which resource what each resource does um, for the argument reference in the in the data block to see to see all the ways that you can actually search for, for the resource itself. But you can see here this returned, and now we have Tuts. So now we are returning our our Tuts VPC. Perfect. So let's so awesome. So that, that's kind of how data sources work. You know, that's it, very simple. It's just kind of like an API call. Let's let's work through a couple more examples to kind of give you some more uh, w w places where you might use this. You know, um, so we could use this on our our subnet now if we wanted to. So now instead of it being AWS VPC main ID, to set it, we can do data data dot AWS VPC and then tuts dot, dot ID. So now, when we create this configuration here, we are we're not creating a VPC anymore. We're just using an existing VPC, and then we're creating a subnet and an and an instance. We would actually have to do subnet if we wanted to do you know we could do subnet ID equals the, the AWS subnet here, but we're not, we're not going to actually create this, but you, you get the point on, on how you can, you know, fetch the data. Another thing you might use, you know, data resources for, um, or another good example is for like the AMI maybe. So maybe you have a, a custom image that you, you've built or your company built or that you have for different, you know, different things. And you want to use that um, that AMI, so maybe you eat, that could you know your AMI could be passed in through the a command line variable, or maybe you want to fetch it. So instead of hard coding this here, let's let's fetch an existing AMI. So let's get rid of this. So I have I have an existing AMI in my account here. Let's go to let's go to it. So I just have one called Tuts Ubuntu. So it's just a very basic uh, Ubuntu image that I have. But let's let's go and fetch that and create a uh, and use it to create the instance here. Actually, let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this VPC here because we'll, we'll actually use that because I want to show you actually this working. So let me actually do add that 
subnet subnet ID here. Hopefully all this works. All right, perfect. So now let's, instead of using this AMI, let's, let's grab the AMI that I have here. So what we can do, again, data. And then, you know, what I usually do is I always just do a, a, a Google search, you know, Terraform, AWS, AMI, data. And usually it's the first result and we've got the data source of AMI. And uh, you can see that this has more more options in our VPC to, to do different things. All right, so if you look at the, the argument here, the, the main, the required argument is owners that we need. And owners, um, I'm gonna use self, because it's, it's gonna be the current account that we're using. But if you need to pass in your uh, something else, you can do AWS account ID uh, and so forth. But one thing you can do is you can do most recent so what most recent will do is it will just grab just your most recent AMI. So you can do that. So let's let's do that. Let's grab the most recent for now. Let's do AWS AMI because AWS AMI here. And then like let's just do main AMI. And then our block statement and let's do most recent. True. And now that should give us that most recent um, AMI. So let's let's use this. Let's use this below. So what we can do is instead of this, we can do we can access this by data. AWS AMI, which is the resource name, and then whatever we called it, main AMI, main AMI dot ID. And if you come again, if you look at the argument or the attribute reference, this is what is exported. So we can use the ID here. That's that. And then there's a bunch more things that are, that are exported. So so now what we've got is we've got a configuration where we, we're using an AMI that's already created and we're using a VPC that's already created. And then we're creating the data. We're using that data to create our subnet and our AWS instance. So let's see what happens if we create this. And everything should just work. I probably have an error somewhere. Of course I do. Owners. Okay, yeah, perfect. So owners, like I said, owners is required. So I have to do on, on the AWS AMI. It's not required on AWS VPC. So, so each data source is a little bit different. If I can spell. Ah, self. So that's, that's our current AWS account. Now let's see what happens. There's probably going to be another error somewhere. I probably shouldn't even approve dash if I just done apply or plan. But but essentially, you can see, you know, how we've used data sources. Um, and then there's 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 other ways you can retrieve the data based on what resource what each resource says in their argument reference. Um, but yeah. So that's that's basically how. Data sources work, they're very powerful. You'll use them quite often, uh, uh, depending on what your, your infrastructure setup is. Uh, but uh, I think that's all we have for now. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and I will see you in the next video.